five, four, three, two, one. We are now in the cut. Welcome to Open Cut MMA Podcast. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, we are now the Open Cut Podcast. We were previously the Liver Shot. Um, we're going to try and get to you on more platforms now, but uh, same takes on MMA. We're trying to clean it up for you a little bit, give you some previews of fights, what we think uh, best bets are, and our takes on uh, some recaps of some fights, as well as get you up to date on some fight announcements. Um, so let's go ahead and get into the, some of those fight announcements. Um, just in the past week, Sean O'Malley, uh, his suspension was announced by USADA, so he's going to be fighting in July. Great news I'm for everyone. I'm so excited for this. I'm so excited for this. I've been, I, you know me, I love Marlon Vera. I think, I said it, I'm calling it, I'm hoping, 2020, he holds that Bantam belt so at he, some point, or in 2021. Uh huh. some point, I think he's going to hold it. But Sean O'Malley, man, I think once the pop came from USADA, they took it well. I think it's going to be awesome, man, because fucking both guys just put on a show. There's never a lame yeah, fight with these guys. And then especially National on that card. Fight, yeah, yeah National Fight Week in that card. It's I mean, a there's it's great just opportunity monstrous. for both of those. Uh, Damian Maya and Anthony Rocco Martin or Tony Martin or Rocco Martin or Tony Rocco Martin, they're, they're <laughs> fighting in Minneapolis uh, towards the end of June. Um, I always love watching Damian Maya fight more because I love watching how someone prepares for that fight. Yeah, um, it's a lot of it, preparation. It's, it's it's a difficult matchup for anyone, um, and if you don't get it right, then Damian Maya gets a hold of you and you lose. It's over. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think Damian Maya, like you've always said, is a gatekeeper, and Damian Maya also puts such a different mode into that welterweight division. That is a lot of brawlers, a lot of submission experts but not submission experts like him. He may not throw a punch, but he wants to get a hold of you, and once that happens, it's over. So I think that's absolutely going to be a knockout fight for Anthony to potentially take his head off, but at the same time, don't let Damian get a hold of you. Claudia Gadelia and Randa Marcos for UFC 239, so that's another fight on that International Fight Week card. <laughs> It's just stacked. Stacked. Just keep adding them. Um, in the last few days, we just heard it was finalized, DC and Stipe uh, at UFC 241 in August. Thank God. This, yeah, this we've is, been waiting. Um, back to the very first episode of The Liver Shot. Yep. This was on our list of fights we wanted to see. Um, Throwback Thursday. Yeah, DC and Stipe. <laughs> This is this is the rematch that Stipe deserves. I, I was fine with Derek Lewis getting the title shot uh, while, while Stipe sat out one. Um, I had no nothing in me wanted to see a Brock Lesnar DC fight. No. Uh, the, to me, this is the fight. I don't mind waiting for a year for it. I'm glad it's happening. Yeah, and Stipe deserved to get this one, like you said. And two, Stipe also played the right move. Is he waited and bought his time? DC is in the same boat. He's not going to rush for anybody. And at the same time, DC was probably having a lot of people at his ankles saying, hey, do we want to do this Lesnar? Well, we can't do it yet, but what do you think about it? you got to keep the option on the table if you're him because it's so much money. But well, it, is it so much money now that they've revamped the, the ESPN Plus gets all the pay-per-views? It, it, it could be a major difference in that. The other difference is, did DC look back and go, Jesus, I could have fought again by the time we get yeah, this happening. I could have fought twice and yeah. then done. Yeah. And also, too, let's just bring it up. Father Time is not the greatest on DC's side right now, so he does not want to waste any more time. And what better than to have this fight where you go in and either say, I told you, I'm still the best, or Stipe gets a redemption. And then guess what? We're all talking a fun story here afterwards because now everybody in the heavyweight division is even hungrier because they're back to the guy that nobody could touch. And you're going to have some clarity because yes. I'm, I'm actually glad this, this fight was not made for the uh, International Fight Week card because um, this is going to be now a couple months afterwards. You, you've already had Francis and JDS fight. Yes. So, um, a lot of now, movement of potential here. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. That's awesome. And then another person I've been talking about fighting for forever is Korean Zombie. Yeah, coming buddy. back. He's fighting Hanato Moicano. Um, they both verbally agreed to fight on June 22nd. Um, so I, from all I have heard, that fight is, is getting signed. Um, it is, is going to happen. And this is fantastic. I love watching uh, Korean Zombie fight. And it's good to see Hanato come back. I, I believe his last fight was that beat down against Jose. Yeah, so. it, and it makes sense for both of them because they're both coming off losses. Korean Zombie, as everyone, if you've not known, had to take four years off from fighting in general going over to do his you know 
is military service they had. So right now, yeah, he's wanting to take any fight that they can get him. So I think Renato is going to be able to get in there and absolutely have a huge opportunity to get back to where he was again. And then Korean Zombie's just fun to fight, to watch fight anyway. Even with the uh, year knockout, who oh gives a shit? Oh, that was the best gosh. fight I've seen in years. I know, it's so fun. And, and then yeah, it sucks like for that. him. And it then it ends like, like that. that. But it sucks. But at the same time, is no one's going well. That you know that really hurts him. No fuck, that might have put his stock up. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, just the fight announcements are out of control. So those are just some fight announcements in the last about week and a half. Um, I want to go bigger picture right now. What are we most looking forward to for the rest of the year? Uh, so number one on my list is th this International Fight Week card. It's it's a huge, huge card. It's headlined by John Jones against Thiago Santos. You have Amanda Nunez defending the bantamweight title against Holly Holm in the heavyweight division. Francis Ngannou and, and Junior Dos Santos. Yep. Welterweight division: Jorge Masvidal and Ben Askren. <laughs> uh, Luke Rockhold is making his light heavyweight debut against Jan Blachowicz. And then we have Sean O'Malley and Marlon Vera, Jack Marshman. Uh, he, and now the, the last fight I see that's already scheduled is Diego Sanchez and Michael Chiesa. I want to see every single one of these fights, and every single one of these fights would be on a main card, on any card. Over and over again. So this is, this is a fantastic, this is number one on my list of things I want to watch uh, the next year, or for the rest of the year, um, just because of the sheer volume of great fights. Yeah, and, and, and this is just a perfect example of how they always do it with Fight Week. They stack a card, they get all the fans excited, everybody waits for a fight like this, all of them. And I think I mean, in the past they've, they've actually had like events Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and I, I think I like this more. Just I like the stack. Shove it down my throat, yeah, throw just it give in me one it all. day, and yeah. then I'm ready. I'm, I'm going to stay Don't at the have to house. prepare for the next day. Yeah, load the cooler. We're not leaving the house. Make sure all the recordings are on. We're watching them all. Because, I mean, you got Ben Asker coming in from one. You got Masvidal that can't stand him, who just had a huge knockout on Till. I That's mean, what, what, which fight are you most, most excited for on this card? I think on that card, the most entertaining that I think is going to be just. I think is going to be that O'Malley versus Marlon Vera because O'Malley is so flagrant, just the stuff he does. And Marlon Vera is violent as fuck, and I love him. And I know that's hard to say with a card like this, but I think that that is a fight so early in the card. If that card, if that fight pops off like it should, the rest of the fights should be unreal. Yeah. And I hope Luke gets knocked the fuck out <laughs> in that card. I hope I hope Jorge knocks the fuck out of Ben Askren. We got money and then on that, right? We do have money on that. So for anyone that doesn't know, Don does not think that it, that at any time Ben Askren is going to be knocked out because that, that he survived. Not, that is not what happened. Well, I, that's what I, it I, sounded like to right, me. You said during his next fight he gets knocked out, and I just don't. I just, I'm taking the I'm taking the chances. Right. He's never lost. I'm betting the next fight he doesn't get knocked out. I don't think Jorge's going to do it to him, but yeah. I go back and forth between that fight, I, the Francis and Gano and JDS That's fight might be the I most am. most exciting. I just it's really hard to pick for me. It's really really hard. I'm a bigger fan of the lighter guys are going to throw more volume and more violent strikes than looking for a monster blow because I think with Jan and R Luke, this is going to be a learning lesson for Luke coming into a bigger weight I class. See, that's that's another one. I would uh, yes. really want to see how Luke Rockhold is in a light heavyweight. There, there's no fight here that I'm saying, well, this is a better fight than anyone else because how many fights that we think are going to be absolutely knockout everybody's going to be just completely bloody and battered at the end, and it just goes to a decision because they were technical. But you have these high-ranking fighters, John Jones, obviously, with Santos in general, Amanda Nunez, who is holding two belts with a name like Holly Holm. Francis is doing JDS. Those three fights alone, anybody turns on a TV, they're probably going to keep watching it because every name is known. Mm -hmm. Below that, Every guy there wants to make his name known even more. Yeah. So that's the cool this part. Is, this is the event. This is the event of the year. Um, it's not going to be the main event of the year, but as far as the whole card goes, there's not going to be anything close to this. It's a good middle so, start of the year, I can tell you that. In the words of T.O., get your popcorn ready. <laughs> um, another thing I want to watch this year is the, the remainder of the Bellator, weight, uh, the Bellator Welterweight Grand Prix. There are four fighters left. Um, we just experienced the current champion going through a draw in this tournament, um, the, a majority draw. The, the, the judge who didn't give him the draw actually scored it the other way. 
but he is going to continue on because he holds the belt. Yeah. And then afterwards, he says some strange things about how he's not sure he wants yeah. to keep fighting anymore. Which we're referring he's, to Rory McDonald for anybody that right. doesn't know. Rory McDonald, one of the baddest dudes in the world at 170 pounds. Probably top three, my highest, just everything on his belt of what he's done in his legacy, best welterweight of all time. He, he's for right everything up there. he's done. Uh, he, he's, a, he's a great fighter. He was tearing up in, in the UFC and then ended up making uh, making the move to Bellator. He now holds the Bellator welterweight uh, title. He is part of this Grand Prix. Um, he just fought John, uh, John Fitch. Fitch. And like I said, it was a majority draw. He gets the nod to move forward because he is the title holder. He was talking about, maybe I don't want to fight anymore. I don't like hurting anymore. That went away after the next week. And he says, no, he's good to fight Neiman Gracie coming up. Yeah, you know, I, 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 one, I wish the Grand Prix was a more popular thing like it was back in the day with the Pride. You and like now, the setup? I love the setup because it's entertaining to say, you won, you won, you're next. These are, yeah, these are our top eight fighters in this division. You know who Find you're going to fight eventually, whether it's a guessing game or not. It's, it's very similar to what they're doing in the PFL, which used to be the World Series of Fighting is. Yeah. I'm going to fight you, Regular you're going to fight season, me. Whoever does the, okay, be we're, the best. And I think it makes it easier for matchups. It does hurt for big cards because maybe somebody, you know, happened to have a bad night and they usually might have gone a little bit farther and then now they don't get the big name card that they normally get. You got to win. You got to win. No, and that's the thing is I think it pushes people's feet to the fire to say, this is where you have to show up because it's one or done. And then look at this. John Fitch and Rory go to a draw. Because of the placement of where Rory was, Rory advanced. John did not. Mm -hmm. So there's even more on the line to say, you need to go in and make a statement. I'd and imagine absolutely, he becomes an alternate if, if they need an oh, alternate. Oh, no, he'll 100% be an alternate. ultimate. What I'm saying is, is Rory obviously moves forward in that draw even to be able to fight, obviously, you know, the next fight there. But I think the structure of it is what more sports in the MMA community need. Honestly. Yeah, I don't hear nearly as much talk about it as I did when they were doing the heavyweight Grand Prix, and this probably just because it was heavyweights. Well, some of them were heavyweights. Most of them were just fighting at heavyweight. Well, they got smart. They realized other divisions would be happy to do the same thing, especially with the paycheck at the end. you got to think of oh, the yeah, PFL, yeah. what the PFL did. Big. A million dollars saying, okay, come get it. There's a lot of guys there that don't have a pot to piss in. They're going to probably oh, do yeah. anything to get it. So I don't know. Before this started, I really, really thought uh, Rory was just going to walk through it oh everybody I did. did i think everybody did now i think that anyone's got a chance i mean i don't, I don't know a whole lot about neiman gracie but the musasi her lima and uh mvp both i i think they got a chance no i mean whoever comes out of that side i think what hurt rory going back to it is the musasi fight hurt his momentum because rory had Gardner no messed him up good he had no he had no business fighting That's at middle another guy i wish would stay, would stay in the ufc well you know he, what he's, he's a perfect there, he's a perfect the example that didn't get the respect very similar to dj Musasi was murdering people know, in that. The best people. The Ryan Hall loss is what they said made him leave. Which or not Ryan Hall, um, Uriah Hall. I apologize. No. Uriah no, Hall. No. Pretty sure. Oh, Uriah Hall. Okay. Uriah yeah, Hall. No, no, not Ryan okay. Hall. Not the not the uh, jujitsu master. No, that fight. They did not look at all the fights prior to that. Musasi is probably all time. Top five greatest middleweights. Oh, yeah. From the, the guy has been fighting since he was 18 and been fighting in pride, rise and dream, fighting all the top fighters, and then came in the UFC, cleaned up a lot of guys, and then always asked, where's my title shot? Yeah. Where's my title shot? And then went to Bellator. He got stripped from him because he didn't, I mean, it was like the uh, Chris White had been trying to time his hands for what's a downed opponent. Yeah. I think that was his last fight in the UFC. Yeah. But yeah, I that, think he was, he was sick he of was it. He was one of them that was just like, man, if he, he should be fighting for the for the middleweight belt, he's a he's a fantastic yeah. fighter. Now he's got a middleweight belt. Yeah, and he beat the hell out of Rory. Well, and that's what I want to go to is Rory. I think if he wouldn't have taken a fight like that and focused more on the welterweight division, and say I'm going to stay where I need to be in my lane and I'm going to fight these Grand Prix, which he's doing now. He's doing it already. I just think that that kind of pulled him back a little bit. That was a lot of damage because that Diego Lima fight to get the belt. Good Lord, he had a person growing out of his leg because of the kicks from Diego Lima. And Diego Lima is not someone to fuck with. So I think, uh, I think honestly, Rory right now has a huge opportunity to just make some splashes there. But, God, he's got some tough guys to go in this Grand Prix, like you said. 
MVP is no joke. MVP man. is no Lima joke. Lima is neither. He's got holes in his game, but there yeah. is stuff that he does that it, if you flinch. I would still say Roy's the favorite, yes, for sure. But if you flinch and blink, he's putting you out. Cyborg found that out with a cracked skull. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Just, yeah. That, Gone. Wow. wow. Uh, also on my list is the rematch between Stipe and DC. We already got that enough. Probably don't have to talk about that anymore. Um, we've got a bunch of big women's fights coming up this summer. Yes. Um, we got into that a little bit of the liver shot. Yep. Uh, but there could be some women's belts changing. If not, there's going to be a lot of new top contenders. Yeah. Um, just between now and the end of July. And still it's, fights it's to make be, before yeah. the end of the year. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of opportunity there. And then also... A trend that we've been seeing this year that I think is going to continue is fighters moving up in weight classes. Yeah. And I want to see I want to see how successful these fighters are. So far, they've been pretty successful. Um, almost every fighter that's moved up in weight, um, maybe with the exception being Max Holloway, has been has been uh, that was it, a very big good. jump. <laughs> and <I guess laughs> yeah. Cerrone moving down in weight. Yeah. Um, so Which Cerrone though was an original one fifty five or when yeah, he was I at guess Jackson's. He was just, he was just a little detour. When he one, was at Jackson, Jackson says, "I want you to be my one fifty five Or he fought there for you know eight years basically, and then the welterweight opportunity came in. I mean, it's just it's timing like everything in life, and I think timing and weight classes is a huge thing. Sean O'Malley in the bantamweight. Sean could be a terrific featherweight. Doesn't mean he'll want to do that. There is guys that have the body types to go there. RDA, do you think anybody looking at RDA thought, yeah, go from lightweight to welterweight. That'll be a good choice. I thought he, I thought he, was, he needed to move up. Because the cut was so but terrible. But he, he was doing so well. That's, it's tough to tell someone to do so well when they're ranked one, two, three exactly. champion. It's so. just one of those things. It's definitely timing to me on those classes. Mm-hmm. And then... The last thing I am really looking forward to this year is it all signs point to that we will be unifying three belts. So f for the first time in what seems like a, a while, these interim belts are going to pay off. Yep. Uh, we've got Khabib ret returning from suspension to unify the belt with Dustin Poirier. Whitaker returning from injury to unify his belt with Israel Adesanya. And Kamara Usman, I hope this happens. Oh, my gosh. Uh, unifying with Colby Covington, who has the interim belt. Of those three, is there one you're more excited about? Out of all of those, as far as what the upcoming to the fight that I'm more excited about is the Usman-Colby. Because you have Trump's America versus a guy that has been grinding and fighting and injury and fought through it and just did everything and dethroned a man at one point that none of us thought was going to be beat, which was Tyron Woodley in the welterweight division. I think the buildup for the Usman-Colby fight, I think that is going to be an absolute bloodbath. I don't think it's going to be grind out. I think Usman wants to make Colby pay, and I think Colby thinks he can take out Usman and I think it's going to be a long, drawn-out match. I'm more excited for that. I love Whitaker. You know that. Israel, I like, too. I think that's a terrific fight. I just think the overall animosity makes the card between Usman and Colby jump up because it's kind of a Conor Khabib situation. Keep talking. Keep talking. Keep talking. Talk and then now. when the, and then talk and now. talk Let's now. Talk now. Because when the fucking ring door closes and there's a ref only in there with you, there's nobody stopping until you do a little tap on the side or you're fucking out. And I think that's what Usman wants to do to Colby is he wants to make him pay for all this time off because what have I always said? Colby's been fucking around for a long time and not fought anybody. Fought. It's, been it's almost fought. two years by the time he gets this fight going. Usman just took the belt and he said, I don't care. Let's get right back in the ring. I could take a year off too. I don't want to. I want to make a statement. I want to show people I can defend my belt. I feel like he's going to, I don't know. I hope this fight happens this year. I think he's going to try and milk this first well, victory for a while. My milking is taking your time till the end of the year, he is, not he is, taking yeah. a year and a half. Right. That's right. my difference is yeah. I completely, like Stipe, DC, anybody that took a belt from and back from somebody in the last couple of years, take your 8, 10, even a year off. Don't take a year and a half. First and time then, you get the belt, you, you need to get healthy. And then book a fight and then yeah. wait another four months. Book that fight 10 months in and fight it three months later. These guys should all be training and being in camp. But, yeah, it's a loaded question, man. Khabib versus Dustin, 
I'd love to see that. I'm scared to death for Dustin. I really am. I think Khabib is going to come back and go, oh, you've seen my fights before? Well, that's congratulations. You beat Max Holloway a weight level lower than you mm -hmm. normally. Let me show you what happens when I take time off and I've been training the entire time. But who yeah. knows? Honestly, for me, the Usman Covington fight, I want it to happen maybe the, the most, but it is the least I'm excited to watch. Really? I think that their styles together, they're both just the... the Tough dancing partners. Yeah. They're, they're, they have the same style. Yeah. They really do. They win, they win fights the same way, by decision, by beating you up, but nothing but nothing flashy. No, not very yeah. often are they finishing people. I think it, I think it'll be a good fight. I just I I think that stylistically, as far as like the intrigue of what I, what what the possibilities are in this fight, that one I feel like I already got figured out. I know I know what it's going to look like. I'm not sure who's going to win, uh, but I'm not. It's not the most intriguing to me. I th the Whitaker Adesanya fight to me is this is where the top of the middleweight division is and this is where Israel Adesanya is and I want to see how close those are Yep. because I think Whitaker's going to win I think he's got too much going on right now but I think Adesanya's getting closer and closer and then the Khabib fight in Dustin Poirier is great the fight I want to see is Khabib and Tony um, oh, God. It, it, it makes sense for it you to be I mean, obviously Dust, Dustin deserves this fight now he, sh he should get it um, I don't I don't know what his chances are I, I, don't, I don't peg them high but you know what? He fucked up Max, man. No one's been able to do that, so maybe there's something to him. Yeah, and you know, just to jump back into that, I think the Khabib thing that hurts me is the time lapse. I think we have not seen Khabib's face, not heard from him, nothing else, and then what he did to Connor makes us all as fans or just in general go, okay, well, you're out for a while. We'll just wait to hear from you. Dustin just did that with a guy from another weight class. I'm the same with you. Whitaker has so many tools in that magic bag that he continues to pull out. He wins a lot of ways. He finds the way to win. And Israel is a new, unique fighter in the middleweight, which I couldn't be happier to see. And I and Israel is not going anywhere. Now, you got to remember, Israel is not a 21-year-old kid that came up through the ranks and just killing everybody. And we're going, where the fuck is this no, he's guy? He's a kickboxer. This guy's been around. He's been in the glory. He's been in you know training, doing things big. And he's not scared to get dirty. You know, like he always, I've always said, he goes, I got knocked out. I was happy I got knocked out. I'm fine with that. His arrogance is not always there like what people see on TV. So that's going to be something different for Whitaker. He's, he's going to fight a fighter that goes, I know you're as good as I am. How are we going to beat each other? What do we have that we don't know about? The Gaslam fight's a perfect example. There was stuff Gaslam did that Israel wasn't ready for. He happened to figure it out got through it um but yeah to me honestly the Usman Col colby i know it's not the most on paper and past fights entertaining i think the animosity and also what you bring up earlier they're not the most entertaining fighters well or a masvidal who is colby's partner didn't always get a lot of tkos there for a while he just made darren till find out what a tko is all about too so colby could show up and say i got a new trick in my bag also yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I, I've seen, I've seen uh, Usman lay out so Jim Rice. It's just, it's just not, it's not their style. It's, it's more of a wrestle on you. Well, drag Sergio you down, Rice is style. my dad's age, so <laughs> I, a lot of people are knocking him out. Love you, Sergio, but you need to go ahead and retire. All right. So I think we're gonna end it there today. That is yeah. going to be our intro uh, episode to the Open Cut, and we'll get back to you after UFC 238. Let you know how we feel about that, and then uh, obviously we'll give you some more previews moving forward, especially to that 239 card. Yeah, buddy, stitch it up, and we'll see you next time.